What is up guys, GT Gamer here and welcome back to Train Simulator 2017 and we're in Montana, it's a lovely sunny day and I must say it's pretty flat around here. Over there in the distance is quite maintenance but it's pretty flat here. We're at Browning Station and we're travelling along the very, inf well, very famous uh, Marias Pass route from Browning via Cutbank to Montana. We're not stopping at Cutbank though, we're just going through it. And we're in a very, very big train. It's uh, this massive, it's called an ES44DC or something like that. I oh, know, I'll put it in the title. And we've got 70 container cars. 70! Like, that is a lot. These, are, these trains are massive. And this is my second take at this video. Well, not this specific video. I did promise in the end of the last video I'd do a freight route, so earlier last week, well late last week I suppose you'd say, I went on to Cajon Pass in California and I made a lovely hour 20 long minute, hour 20 long minute, that didn't make sense, hour and 20 minute long video going right over the summit of the pass and right at the end of the video I basically hit a point at like 75 miles an hour and it crashed my game, well it didn't crash my game, it almost derailed the train and it froze it for a second and the problem was that it broke my mp4 file like it was weird, it still played but if I tried to convert it to constant frame rate which you need to edit and sync up the sound it just didn't work, it really didn't so I had to scrap that entire footage, I'm really upset about that, I spent all week trying to fix it but there was just no way I couldn't find a way to fix it. So let's get going anyway. So what we need to do, we need to go inside the cockpit or cabin, whatever you want to call this. And we need to find the headlight switch, which is here. And the headlights need to be, uh, where do they need to be? There, maybe? I'm not sure, let me have a look outside. Is that right? Yes it is, there are our headlights. So let me zoom out a bit. And yeah, this is a very big train. We can press the three key and go all the way to the back. And yeah, you saw how far the camera had to fly to get there. Like, we can't even see the front of the train. It's very big. And back to the front. Right, let's get going. So we're in Browning. We need to put... Uh, let me get my mouse, use my keyboard. I'm using a controller, that's why you don't see my mouse. Reverser, forward. Brake is... Which one of these is the brake? Not sure. I think it's this one. I oh, know, I'm not an expert on trains. I think that means the brake's off. Let me get the HUD up, that would be easier. Yep, brake's off, we're in forwards. So let's give it a little bit of throttle. Uh, oh, goes backwards, that's unusual. Normally one is at this end of the throttle and eight is at this end, but okay. Whatever, and this is picking up speed quite fast, i got to be fair. But yeah, I was very disappointed that my other video got scrapped, essentially. I don't know why, it was a, a header error with the MP4. I recorded MP4, and you can't fix that if it breaks, which was a real shame, but there's not really much I can do about it. It is a lovely day in Montana. I've never been to America. I've always wanted to go to America, never been, but my life goal, my one life ambition is to do a road trip across the United States and I've already planned a route for it. We're going from, I'm starting in Boston, Massachusetts, going down the coast to New York and then we're going to head west over to Chicago because apparently Chicago is quite nice. I want to go to the Willis Tower and stand in that glass room, which if you don't know, there's like a room on the Willis Tower and it's made entirely out of glass and it slides outside the building so you can basically walk like 500 feet above the ground. Right, we need to horn here. One, two, I'll explain why I'm doing this now, give me a second, three and four, cross the points. The reason I did that with a horn is in America, something I do know, is that the way the horn works, when you're coming up to a railroad crossing or a level crossing as we call them in the UK, you have to uh, beat the horn three times, uh, uh, four times, sorry, 
it's two long beeps, then a short one, like a short little blast, and then a long beep as you actually cross over the point, just to let cars know you're coming. Right, let's go a bit more with the throttle, that's the brake, the throttle, because this is actually quite a fast route, and we're going 40, the speed limit's 55. I'm not sure if freight trains can do it, but passenger trains can hit 79 miles per hour on this route. I don't know if we will today, this is literally the first time I've done it, I'm jumping in. I have done this route before in Train Simulator 2017, it's actually one of my most, most successful videos so far on this channel. And I did the entire length, it took 5 hours 22 minutes. It took a very long time, let's just put it that way. And you can watch that in full if you want, but fortunately I did make a 5 minute version of it, so it's mega time lapse. But yeah, that, it's, it's a very long route, let's just leave it at that. Uh, it starts in Shelby and finishes in, I can't remember where it finishes, we're speeding. We're going downhill, oh the speed limit's going up to 70 soon. That'll be good. Right, break off, will we, we'll probably start accelerating again, yeah we are. That's because we're going downhill quite steeply. But yeah, I'd just like to say, American trains are incredibly, stupidly big. <laughs> like, seriously. In the UK, freight trains, even the longest ones, are like five carriages. Uh, well, not five, but they're about 150 metres long, 200, 250 at most. This thing is absolutely huge and it's double stacked yet another thing we don't have in the UK oh that's a weird point oh huh. it's like both lines converged instead of one converging off the other that's unusual but yeah this train it must weigh thousands of tons like we don't even have double stacked trains in the UK it just they'd be too big for the track it would just never work but this is just huge like I've never seen a train remotely as near as big as this one. And this isn't even that big, really. Like, I was driving this game before, and it had, the train had 107, 120 carriages, even. Like, it's just amazingly big. Like, honestly, I've never seen anything this big, I don't think. Like, man-made, at least. Right, we've gone through the 70 board, we've got to wait for the back of the train to pass, that's the rules. So as soon as the back of the train passes, we'll be able to accelerate all the way up to 70 miles an hour. That's one of the main reasons I chose this route. Not only is it a really scenic route, especially in the maintenance parts, which I'll probably do in another video, but it's also very fast. Like, it's much faster than Cajon Pass, which is very wavy and curves down the side of a mountain. This is just flat land, so they built a very straight piece of track. And I think that's pretty cool. We've got 55 miles to go, but at 70 miles an hour, it shouldn't take that long. Although it is saying our ETA is 1 hour 20 minutes, but that should come down. I hope. I don't know. I don't mind sitting here for a few hours recording. But let's just hope. I'm actually going to pay attention to the signals this time, so I don't hit a point at 70 miles an hour. But honestly, that just sucked. I, that, I don't get it. The MP4 file was fine, but I couldn't convert it into a constant frame rate. And if I tried to sync the sound up, it'd be like, oh, look at that over there. And the camera would just stay still. And then about 20 seconds later, the camera would pan round. Meanwhile, I'm talking about something completely different now. Right, we have a flashing yellow light. I think that means we've got a track change coming up. So I'm going to slow down just to be sure, because I don't know for sure what I mean. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to check the map. You can see there how far we've got to go. Right, does this line converge into two at any point? Yes, up here. So we're going straight. Uh, that shouldn't be much of a problem for us. Oh, I'm just going to let it roll and hope for the best. But yeah, if we look at the map, so here we are in our massive, massive train. We're going all the way along this 
pretty straight route. This is the occasional bump just to avoid a hill or something. Then we're going over a very lovely, very scenic bridge by here into Cutbank, which has a station, an Amtrak station, and the passenger station, uh, an Amtrak station and a freight route. And then we're going all the way down here, and this down here is Shelby, yet again, passenger station and the yard, because this is mainly a freight section. Got a honk for this uh, crossing. It's a little late with that one. They would have got out of the way. Oh my god, we're actually speeding. Going downhill quite steep at the moment. I'm not sure what that flashing yellow meant if it didn't mean we got a track change. I don't know, should I slow down just in case the next signal's red? Um, yeah, I'm just going to leave the brake on this low setting. Because I'm not sure what a flashing yellow signal means. I, I don't know signal systems in America. I'll admit that right now. So I just use intuition. It's like, eh, that's red. Probably means stop. Ooh, that's green. We can probably go through it. But, yeah, we got to change to down to 35 coming in less than a mile. So we need to brake pretty sharp. Half brake. That should be enough. Ooh, I don't know. Yeah, it should be. I know, I'm slowing down a lot either way. Right, release the brake, or at least put it on 11% or something. Yeah, 11% seems good. Right, we're below 35 now, so I'm just going to release the brake, and it should pick up speed under its own momentum. We are going ever so slightly downhill. So hopefully it'll start being a speed. We're going very slow at the moment. I must say, BNSF, who do actually operate this route in real life, they have a very nice paint scheme. I like the orange with yellow. That I think that looks pretty cool, don't you? I, I, that does look pretty cool. Gotta be fair, it's nice with the mountains in the background as well. Look, I can't even see the back of the train. <laughs> yeah, there it is. You can nearly see it, but not quite. It is a huge train. Let's get back inside. I do like this display as well. That's pretty cool. I must say, when I first got this game back, uh, I'm not sure when it was, but it was quite a while ago. I wasn't massively keen on it. I did the occasional video, drove it now and again just to get used to a route before video. But I never really, I never really loved it, if that makes sense. Like, if you get a new game and you play it, normally you either go, ooh, that's a great game, or mm, I'm not very fond of it. And at first I wasn't fond of this game. I was like, hmm, it was neither here nor there, it was just a game. But the more I've played it, the more I love it. I, I do like this game a lot now. Got another level crossing here, or railroad crossing. I'm going to try and use the correct terminology, since we are in the States, across the pond. I think we did okay with that horn. We've got another crossing coming up, I believe. E is it? No, that's a bridge. Right, 35. How long does this last for? Do you know, I feel really sorry for Americans for one reason. On slow pieces of track, if they pull up at a level crossing as a train's coming, they've got to sit there for a solid 5-10 minutes just for one train to go past. And if you're unlucky, you could have another, just as the back of the train crosses, you could have another train coming in the opposite direction to block it for another 5-10 minutes. And that would suck if you're late for work or something. Like, I can see why people would be tempted to run the tracks in America. In the UK, you'd get done for that. And you probably will in America, but... I don't know, a rural level crossing, no police. A train's quarter mile away. You probably would go for it if you're late for work. Let's be honest with ourselves. I probably would, I know that. It depends how fast the train was going, obviously. If I thought I could make it, though, I probably would be tempted. Where are we? I actually don't know where we are. One thing I do want to do, because as I said, originally I filmed this on Cajon Pass. My original plan was to do the freight route on Cajon Pass and the passenger route on the Marias Pass. But the problem with Cajon Pass, it's nice, but it's a bit repetitive. Like it gets a bit boring after a while. And 
I'm not sure I want to sit there for three hours recording or whatever, however long it takes. And I'm not sure you want to sit there and watch me just talking about random nonsense for an hour or whatever on a fairly boring route. So what I decided to do was I'm going to record this. Uh, I, oh, we can go for it now. I'm going to record this video uh, on this end of the Morris Pass. And then I'm going to do the Amtrak route on the same pass, but probably in a different place. I was thinking maybe from Whitefish to somewhere. I don't know, maybe through the mountains would be quite nice. But I just thought that would be so much better. That's, and that's the thing, Amtrak does actually operate on this route. It's one of their most successful routes. It's called the Empire Express. And I'm not sure how often it runs, but it goes all the way from Chicago across to Seattle and I think it goes to Portland as well, or somewhere like that. Somewhere west coast. And it is one of the most popular routes. The problem with American passenger trains, like in the UK, they're fast, they're fairly comfortable. You don't mind catching a train if your car breaks down or you need to go somewhere and you can't drive. But in America, the problem with trains is passenger trains, most of the time the passenger companies like Amtrak don't own the track. Like this piece of track probably is actually owned by BNSF. And the problem with that, as great as that sounds, is that if you have two trains, one's a BNSF train carrying five million dollars worth of grain and the other's just a passenger train you're going to favour your own train because you get more money off not delaying it. So the net result of that is unless the track's clear, the Amtrak train will get delayed. And it's the same here because in America, tracks aren't owned by the government. If you own a train company, you could buy your own track, you can lay a track if you need to pull one down. But in other countries like the UK or France, the track is owned by the government like network rail in the UK so network rail lays the track and then the train companies just pay to use it and they're favoured equally so it's just a much more efficient system but in America you just you can't do that because the other company owns the train and you can't exactly say no you should favour my train because we have passengers it just wouldn't work like it's just not a particularly great system. I beat too early then. Oh, I'll give it another one across the crossing. I am going to try and be good and stick to that rule as much as possible. Oop, we got another speed change coming up. Down to 55. Very scenic. Like some parts of, Mon of Montana and the States. But other parts are quite flat like this, for example. There's not really much to see. It's just farmland and wildland pretty much the other end of the pass where i want to do the passenger service that is incredibly scenic it goes through a massive mountain ridge i assume it's the rockies i don't know and honestly some of the views you get there are absolutely epic epic is the only word to describe it they really are lovely we just caught that speedboard Wow, that was lucky. We're starting to get into a more curved part of the track now, I think. It looks like we are, at least. Oh, no, we just got a little bit of bump. Then a massive straight. <laughs> it's, I do like the fact that this is a fast route. That's one thing I always find odd. Just talking about speed, thinking about it. Like you just saw a minute ago, the speed limit was 79. And we got another one coming up, the 79 mile per hour speed board. And... I don't get that. Why not just put it as 80? Why 79? That seems odd to me. Like, in most... On most tracks, it's like... Okay, you could take this curve safely at 60. So let's make the speed limit 60, or 50, or something like that. But in America, why 79? And it's not because of the geometry of the track or anything, because it's a straight track. And it's not just this route, like I know that the Pacific Surfliner in California has 79 mile per hour speed boards. And I'm not sure why it's 79. The only thing I can think of 
is that there's some kind of safety thing with a track or some kind of obscure regulation which says you can't go above this speed but that also seems odd to me because if it's that much of an issue why couldn't they just say look this is an old or uh, old or this is an old law can we just get rid of it or rewrite it because can't we just go up to 80 it just it doesn't make sense to me it it's odd i'll just leave it at that god this train is long that's probably got what most of this video is just going to be me talking about how long this train is that is amazingly long. Like, if I press 3, you basically fly over an entire town before you get to the end of it. Look, it flies across the line, you can't even see the train for some of it. Well, that is... I do get it, but it is very big. Oop, speeding. No, that's throttle. I still haven't got used to the control. It's backwards. Take any game. Any game where you can use an Xbox 360 controller to drive. Right trigger is throttle, left trigger is brake. On here, left trigger, throttle, right trigger, brake. It doesn't make sense, it's backwards. I've lost what I was talking about now. <laughs> oh, that is me written all over. I literally cannot remember what I was talking about. But yeah, these trains are just huge. Oh, that's what I was going to talk about. Why they're so huge. Because just think for a minute about countries which have really big trains. I'll give you a few examples. Canada, America, Australia. Now think of examples with small trains. The UK, France, Spain, Germany. There's a pattern. It's because in uh, America, I missed the horn on that one completely, so I'll just hold the horn down. In America and Canada and Australia, they are huge countries. Like, America's more than 3,000 miles across just the mainland. So, to make something efficient, they basically ship materials across in bulk, massive bulk of materials. Whereas in smaller countries, it's more efficient to ship them in smaller, still bulk, but smaller bulks. Like, let me... Let's imagine there was an iron ore in Cornwall on the south coast of Britain and the refinery was in Scotland and they needed so many tons, say 50 tons a day. It's cheap, because it's such a short distance, it's cheaper just to say, right, we'll send you a single train with 50 tons of ore a day. And then every day that train will make the trip so the refinery is always full with ore. But then in America, it would be, right, shipping 50 tons over 3,000 miles, that's not efficient. That's, it's going to cost more to ship it than you'll get net profit. It's just not efficient. So instead, what they do is they say, right, you use, if it's 50 tons a day, you'll use 35, 350 tons a year, uh, a year, a week. So what we'll do is we'll get one big train, fill it with 350 tons and send you one a week because that's more efficient you use less fuel because even though you use more fuel on the way there because it's a bigger heavier train it, it'd still be less fuel and more profit than doing one every day for less so that's why they do it because American trains like this train's probably not going 50 miles this train's probably going to continue past Shelby to God knows where, Chicago or something. So it's just more efficient to put all the containers they have going to Chicago on one train and send a big massive train. Instead of going, right, let's get five trains and fill all of them with uh, containers. It's just so much more efficient. We still have, like, let's go full throttle. We still haven't hit 79 miles an hour. And I do want to hit it at some point. We're going to have to slow down massively for cut bank. How far away are we? There's the train. And cut banks are there. Right, so after this straight, there's a few notches in it. The track starts to get curvy. Then it goes over that bridge. I've got to go outside view over that bridge. It's gorgeous. And then it goes through cut bank. Right. 
from Touch Bank, I do actually know the route off by heart because I used to play it and build on it in Trains 2006. So from about here, actually, that's it's about here where it cut off. So from about here all the way to Shelby, I know the route off by heart. I even know the track layout. So I should be fairly good at driving from here on out. As soon as I start seeing curves, like the curves in the track, I'll know how to drive and how to slow down accordingly. I don't know the speed limits, I'll admit, but they're displayed, so we'll have plenty of warning before the speed limit comes up. And if need me, I'll just brake really, really hard. Right, what's this sign coming up? Is that important? No, that's just a whistle board, I think, or a speed in the other direction. And either way, it doesn't apply to us. Hang on a minute. Yeah, that caught me out in the car on pass. I just remembered that. When you hit 75, the train will start beeping because even though the track speed is 79, so trains can go 79 on this piece of track safely, the actual locomotive speed is 75. Even though it can go above that, it shouldn't. It's not safe to do so, it's not certified to. So if the train starts beeping, that's why. I'll just I'll give you advance one of that, because it took me a while to figure that one out, and by the time I did, we was going 79 miles an hour. So I had to slam the brakes on. It's a shame, I would have liked to show you that video, but it's just a shame that it broke. It was true though, the signal, it was yellow and red, I think. No, it was yellow and green, if I remember right. And I went through it, thought, right, okay, that probably means the next signal is yellow. So I slowed down a bit from 79 down to 70. And then all of a sudden, no warning whatsoever, there was just a point in front of me, open. And it was like, oh, we're changing track. Hang on, that's a very sharp point. And I saw it, I was about from here to that curve away. And I, I zoomed in just like that to look at it and I thought, ah, oh, if we're changing track, that should probably break. And by the time I put the brakes on, I thought, we were very, very close. It's like, oh, I need to slam brakes on. I went full into emergency brake and the train actually lifted up on the one side as it hit it. And the game just froze for a, a solid 10 seconds. And I sat there like, oh, this is bad, this is bad, and I probably played it up to build the tension, because I was quite tense, I wanted to know if he was going to derail or not, either way it was going to look cool. And it's like, oh, is it going to freeze, is it going to... And then it just came back again, the frames, and I was like, oh yes. Pull into the yard, we didn't derail right at the end. I stopped recording, I was really happy, and I opened handbrake, which I used to convert the video to constant frame rate, so you can edit it, and keep the audio in sync. And it just went, nope. Well, actually, that's not true. It took three hours encoding it in full quality. And then it went, nope. So yeah, that really annoyed me because not only did I not find out for ages, like, it didn't tell me there was a problem, but it was 3 a.m. I needed to sleep. And then it decided, go, nah, we don't want to do that. And I was just like, dude, are you serious? You, you can't do that. Like, I, I don't get it. The video was fine. I watched it back. I played it back to make sure it was fine. And it was. So I don't get how it was broken. I even tried looking through the settings, the preferences. And I just couldn't find any reason why it was broke. But it just kept saying, nope, can't convert this. So then I tried uh, another encoder, and it told me there was a header error. So I thought, what if I converted it into an AVI, which is another a different type of file format. So I did that, it worked fine. But the problem is, now, it's constant frame rate, but it's still out of sync, because it encodes it differently. So either way, the video was out of sync. I might as well have just dragged this straight into the video editor how it was, but either way, no sound was going to be synced up. And no one wants to watch a video where I go, right, that signal ahead of us is yellow. 
and there's no signal anywhere near us because the audio's playing 15 seconds early. Like I've had videos in the past where the audio was so out of sync that it was like, you'd say, oh, look at that car. And there was no road for 55 seconds. Some of them were nearly a minute out of sync and nobody wants to watch that because you're just like, wait, what's going on? He said there was a car, but there's no car. And then you'll drive past the car half a minute later. It just, it confuses you. So I couldn't release that video. I just had to delete the footage, which really sucked because that was a good video. I was pretty happy with that. Even though the route was quite boring, it was quite interesting. I was found a lot. I had a lot to talk about, and I was talking to you guys about a lot of things. I can't remember what I was talking about now, but it'll come back to me. I'll go back over the audio or something. But it was a really cool video, especially the tension and the derailment, the near derailment at the end. I thought, oh, this is going to be an awesome video. But my computer was just like, no, and. I really upset me though, like, it disappointed me that day, I was looking forward to releasing that video, but I, it's just a shame I can't, and now I've deleted the footage because I needed space to film this one because I need a new hard drive. I got this job and I've been paid once for two days work, even though I did four, they underpaid me, not happy about that, but I get paid again Friday, so I've got a few things I need to buy. I need to book driving lessons, I need to buy a new TV because this one's broken at the moment and then after that I'm going to start buying computer parts. Uh, top priority is a motherboard because mine freezes randomly now and again. I've, luckily it hasn't happened in a video which is surprising because that's when it's under the most stress. So that's quite cool how it hasn't recorded during a video but it's only a matter of time so I need to replace my motherboard. Then I'm buying a new SSD or hard drive, either one. If it's a hard drive, it needs to be a good one to keep up. And then I'm just going to generally upgrade things. I might get a new graphics card again or something along those lines. Why are we not picking up speed? I've been, as I was talking then, I was looking at that like, hang on, we're not picking up speed. Hmm. We're only 30 miles away from Shelby. Where is it up there? I think we're getting close to cut bank now. I'm pretty sure the curvy part of the track is coming up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. There's a right, then a left. These are quite gradual turns. It's this one here, I believe, which has a hill on the inside here. That's where it curves quite sharply. And then, once again, go up the bridge and it'll curve into cut bank. I think it's 35 over that bridge at the end. I don't know, don't quote me on that. We'll find out in a minute or so. God, I love Faven. I've said that in like five videos now. Gotta have my fix, man. Gotta have my fix in the team. What it is, is I used to smoke. I gave up a year and a half ago now in January. And best thing I ever did, if you smoke, honestly, give up. But it's it never really leaves you. You're always fidgeting. Like, I used to use chewing gum to help me quit smoking, and it worked, it did work. But I found myself then going, ooh, wish I had a fag. And before I knew it, I was spinning something in my hand or playing with a pen. But like, I have three fidget spinners, there's two on the desk right in front of me. I don't use them anymore, but they're just there and I haven't been bothered to put them away. But yeah, when you smoke, something never leaves you you're always fidgeting and looking for something to do you like chewing stuff and it's just it's anxiety I'm pretty sure it's just your anxious there's me honking think that's a level crossing and it is what the hell is that we've got a level crossing coming up what is that i don't care that we just missed a level crossing i honked once train detection system installed in track all track work must all track work next 30 meters must comply within procedure. Wait, what is it? Wheel condition monitor. Oh, my wheel's in good condition? I hope so. Right, we should probably get back in the cab. Uh, 50 limit, 50 limit. Brake, brake hard, 50%. Oh, quarter mile, can we do it? Oh, this is gonna be close. I think we might. I don't know, there's the marker there. Yeah, we ooh, will we? Oh, damn, that was close. 
Damn. That was close. Very, very close. Of course, now we've gone massively under the speed limit because the brakes still haven't released properly. So now we'll just coast back up to speed. Look, it's picking it up already. You won't believe how fast the train picks up speed on Cajon Pass. If you don't have the brakes on all the time, you'll get speeding points all the time. Like, you'll really go right with 12 under the limit, we've slowed down too much, release the brakes. Two seconds later, you'll be back up the limit. It just picks up speed like you're in a Formula 1 car. It's, it's like you've got full throttle downhill. It does pick up speed very fast, and even here it's coming back quite quickly, the speed. I'll tell you one thing though. I do. I am getting an outside shot. In fact, I'm getting a thumbnail on Cutbank Bridge. When we get close to it, I'm going to get a camera. That's something I need to mention. But I'll do it in a moment. <laughs> I'm going to get a camera, fly across the bridge, and I'm going to get an absolutely amazing thumbnail. I tell you one thing, mind the frame rates on this route are really good. I've been getting solid 70 at the moment, and my computer is not even top spec. It's good, but it's not top spec. Uh, I'm impressed at that. Do you know what would make this route really awesome? AI traffic. But that's one of the biggest letdowns in Train Simulator. Only like three routes have AI traffic. And i got to be honest, I don't know how to set it up. And I don't want to go into like a scenario. I will do scenarios at some point. But I, I want a free run. I want to say, right, I want to start here and end here. Because I think that would be a cool route. I don't want to find a random scenario and go, eh, it's close enough. Because, I don't know, I just, I like it being a full route. Like, deciding where to go, where to stop, so I know what I'm in for. And it's just, it sucks that there's no AI traffic. That's my biggest bugbear about this game. Why is there no AI traffic? Like, it just sucks. It, it can't be that hard to implement if third-party developers can build a route and say, right, we're going to have AI traffic. Even if it's not as much as in real life. It'd just be nice if now another train came round that corner and you could get a really cool thumbnail with the two trains passing. And it also adds the surprise element. It's like, ooh, I wonder what that train's carrying. But you just, you don't get that. And it's my biggest, it's the thing that this game lacks most. It needs most. And granted, in Train Sim World, which is this, is, this game's replacement, it has AI traffic, but I don't see why they couldn't have just done it here. It'd make the game so much more enjoyable. It is a bit of a shame. Ooh, objects loading in in the distance. So yeah, that is... If I could change one thing about this game, I'd definitely put AI traffic in. Even if it was half realistic, so instead of two trains an hour, you'd get one train every hour or something like that. Half as much as there really is. It's still something. But... This, like, there's not even any trains on the side the, of the track on a side in and it, it makes you ask yourself how hard can that really be to put in right what I'm going to do that's what I was going to say I found out how to fast travel a camera before I had to go along like this which obviously would never work over a long distance if you hold down right trigger I didn't know this if you hold down right trigger you can fast travel and this is the bridge I was on about where, Bait to speed now train, but it don't matter. Yeah, it's not as impressive as I thought it would be, but you can guess some. Ooh, we've hit the limit. This is how far the camera goes. Shows we're close. Uh, how do I increase the brake on the keyboard? I don't actually know. I'm going to do it here instead. I'm going to go back outside. I'm going to try and find a good. Actually, no, I think the speed limit's going to change soon. Right, I'm going to stay with the train until the, the new speed limit, and then I'm going to go get a good thumbnail. Like, the view on that bridge is spectacular. It's not as good as real life in the game. Like, I've seen photos of it, and it is pretty nice in real life. It's not done justice to it in the game, if that makes sense. But it's still, it'd still be a cool place to get a thumbnail. It's pretty much the only bridge or anything on this route. Right, here we are. So I'm just going to keep the brake on 9%. And where are we going to go to get this thumbnail? It'd be nice if we could get the sun in the background or something. 
What about here? Up a bit. Ooh, I think this might work. I think this might work. This will be an awesome thumbnail. It's just a shame the train's going so slow. Look at that, the light effect on the floor. <laughs> Doesn't take into account that the bridge is a solid object, so it just shows the headlight on the floor. Right, this is the moment of truth. Thumbnail time. Oh yeah, that's cool. That's cool. We're speeding a bit, but honestly, I don't care. Oh, we're taking this track. Normally, we'd take the right track there and go through the station, but evidently not today. Oh, speed limit's 30. Speeding again. And there was me releasing the brake because I thought it was 35. Right, back into the speed limit. I think this is slightly... Yeah, this is uphill, so we're going to need a bit of throttle. Oh, I didn't even know there was a level crossing there. On Train 2006, that bridge above us, this level crossing, none of this is implemented because this is new. Like, that track there on the right is implemented, but everything else, like that bridge and all, that's new. This is the Amtrak station up here, Cutbank station. I do want to get a nice... I always like to take multiple good images just in case the thumbnail doesn't work. No, go away, little man. Uh, no. Yeah, bear in mind the HUD won't be shown on the thumbnail. I'll edit that out. Look at that, that is cool. And look how tall that carriage is. I don't know, what are they called? Wagons? Flat cars? Yeah, I suppose I'll call it a flat car. And guess, I, I don't actually know what the freight version of a carriage is. I'm going to guess wagon. Or truck, maybe? Trailer? I don't know. I probably do know it, I just can't remember it. It probably has some kind of term. But this is Cutbank Yard. It'd be so nice to have some trains there on these tracks. That's what they're for, after all. Just have the occasional parked train would be so nice. There's a level crossing down here. Uh, with three tracks going across the road, and there's another one a bit further down with two. Oh, hang on. Yeah, you see, that's another thing. In Train 2006, there's two level crossings. This crossover's there in Train 2006. That crossing up there between the tracks, though, that is about here. And this one, this third track, which tucks in just before, this track here, that one, that goes through the level crossing, so it's three wide, and then it tucks in afterwards. So that's a bit unrealistic in Trains 2006, but then, what can I say, it's Trains 2006. So yeah, not exactly the most realistic game, unless it's changed recently, which is eminently possible. Let me just have a bit of my drink. I'll tell you one thing, Fanta, is the most refreshing drink. I normally have water, like a cold glass of water, very refreshing, but if I was sat next to a pool on a boiling hot day in Spain, Fanta, you just can't beat it. Fanta or Margarita, one of them. But Fanta is the most refreshing drink, especially the orange one. Fanta orange, so refreshing. Like even Coke isn't as refreshing. That's my opinion, at least. The worst thing to drink on a hot summer's day, coffee. <laughs> Just, no. You'll be sweating like a pig for five hours. <clears throat> my throat's gone funny. <clears throat> there you go, much better. Yeah, get a nice shot of it crossing the level crossing, I suppose. Maybe a bit further back from the road. Gotta honk the horn after all. Two, three, four. That was very bad. <laughs> that wasn't a very good honk. That sounds weird to say. Oh, I've left. Uh, I've gone into free camera and now I can't do anything. 
Like seriously, that is a flaw. Why can't you press A to go forwards with the camera really fast instead of right trigger and have the throttle work? Surely that would make sense because what if right now I'd accidentally gone through a red light or I saw a red light. It's like, oh no, I need to brake. Ah, uh, I've just accelerated the camera. Like, unless you change camera view again, which I'll admit doesn't take forever, but still. Like, you're just going to go blasting through a red light or something. It, it, they need to do something about that. Another little bugbear I have is the Windows logo on the Xbox Windows logo. The Xbox logo on the Xbox controller. Why does that have no function on a computer? Uh, what the hell just happened? Did you see that? Or was that my screen? I'm not sure what that is. I'll have to check the footage to see if you guys can see that. But when I press the Windows button, something weird happens with... I've never ever seen that before. And I'm pretty sure we're on the wrong track. Pretty sure that's the other direction's track. Uh, okay, perhaps not. Normally we go on the right side. Yeah, when I press the Windows logo, something really weird happens. That I've never seen that before. Like, I can't even describe it. It's like the colours change a little bit on the screen and flash twice. That's what, but that's one thing I don't get. Why does the Windows, win I keep saying Windows logo, the Xbox logo have no function in games? Like, a lot of games you have to combine buttons to make things happen. But if you use the Xbox logo, you'd have another button to play with and it could be like a special feature or something, like your special ability. Grand Theft Auto, instead of pressing both sticks then together, just press the Xbox logo and boom, special ability. We're speeding and I can't seem to get the speed down. Right. In fact, I think 25 throttle holds us perfectly, so if I go to, say, 30.5, I still have a bit of room to play with. 30.6. Yeah. 25% throttle holds us perfectly. No, it doesn't. Must be leveling out or something. Uh, okay, I'll just keep switching back and forth between 12 and 25 throttle then, I suppose. Another level crossing coming up, if I remember right. When does the speed limit go up? I'm pretty sure the speed limit was meant to go up by now. Hmm. We've got a whistle board here. That's what that W sign there is. That's a whistle board. Just tells you to blow your horn, basically. One. And another long one. And a little bit of, oops, speed limit's gone up. A little bit of two. And one last really long one until we hit the crossing. I'm doing not particularly bad with these horns. I, I do need to learn the American signal system. That's important, especially on high high speed routes. Like you don't want to blast through a red <coughs> you don't want to blast through a red light at 80 miles an hour or 79 for whatever reason that speed there. But yeah, that would be bad because the chances are you're about to hit something. I know, if that really happened in real life, I accidentally went through a red light at 80 miles an hour, I'd probably open the driver's door, just in case I needed to jump out. I'd rather have a really bad bruise and some grazed skin from jumping out of a moving train, than slam directly into 5,000 tons of metal. I know, that's just my opinion. Preservation and all that, you know. We've been inside view for a while, let's go outside view for a bit. Where's the back of the train now? All the way back here. That's odd. There's no, like, safety thing on the back of a train. Like, light. I don't even know how to describe it. In the UK, you have to have headlights on the front and red lights on the back. So, if another train comes up behind you, they can see you. But American trains seem to be severely lacking on the safety systems. I know they have a dead man switch, but like, there's no AWS. 
like there's no warning signal for systems who completely missed that level crossing there's no like safety system if the lights red it'll slam on the brakes if you do nothing or even slam on the brakes if you go for a red light which it generally does but in America, there's none of that. But also, there's no red lights on the back. If this was pitch black and another train went through a red light behind you without realising, they wouldn't see you until they were right on top of you. That's not a good thing. That really is not a good thing. So, I don't know, American safety systems seem to be a bit lacking. It's not just trains either. In, um, I did electronics in school, like an ele uh, electrician. I trained to be an electrician for a year. Um, British pugs, you have the live wire, which carries the electricity, the neutral to complete the circuit, and you have an earth wire. So that if something breaks, it'll just earth you. So if you get electrocuted, for whatever reason, somehow, instead of dying, it'll just instantly trip the fuse. American systems, uh, they don't have anything like that. If you get shocked, you get shocked and it, the only safety thing is they're half the power they're 110 watts, we're 220 but I don't know, America just seems to be a bit more laxed on the safety systems let's just say right we're getting close to the speed limit now, we're going downhill so I'm going to cut the throttle back to 50 in fact I'm going to cut the throttle back completely by the looks of it yeah still accelerating probably going to need to start braking in a moment Uh, containers off into the distance wow like it goes past its own draw distance that's how long this train is the only thing that's been bugging me like these models are brilliant don't get me wrong is one the anti-aliasing isn't brilliant I don't know if you can see that but there's like lines of the container from the graphics not sure what's causing that but it's called anti-aliasing and it's not the best but also there's a lot of repetition in the containers like it's like they have three models and it just repeats them randomly let, let me show you Oop, missed the outside camera need the HUD get a bit organized with my life All right so look at that we have yellow and blue silver and green green and red then yellow and blue silver and green green and red it's just it's repeated this three carriages just or not carriages but you know what I mean three container sets repeated over and over again and since when did the speed limit drop to 60 that's what I want to know uh, this is quite a steep corner eh, no we should be fine I literally had no warning that the speed limit was dropping then that's a little bit unfair if this was career mode and I actually lost points for that I'd be extremely annoyed there's, there's no way, you, like, you can still see where it changed on the map at the bottom, on the HUD and it doesn't show a 60 board anywhere so, I don't know, that's a little bit fishy unless... ah, haha, I figured it out, I think, possibly the American signal system does something the British signals don't they dictate speeds to you so like a yellow signal means 30 or something like that Perhaps that signal we went through dictated a 60 speed limit for whatever reason. I am guessing, I'll admit, that is pure guess, but it makes sense. That could be what happened, so I need to keep an eye on the next signal, which is apparently 100 million miles away. Like, there's none on the map, none at all. So, I don't know, we'll just we'll keep our eyes open for that one very flat in Montana nice little lake for there is that, is that marked? probably not that'd be cool if like you went past a landmark or something and just be like oh this is the cut bank pond or something like that this is Mount Rushmore that, that would be quite cool if things like that were marked on the map obviously not everything like this is Bob's house but just little quirky features like this is so and so something that stands out, oh this is the Shelby Town clock it's really big so it stands out now the speed limit's gone right up to 70 with no warning right what's this signal down here? that is green, that's fine I'm fine with the green signal right, how far away are we? 
four, they're just under 15 miles. We are going into the yard, not the station at Shelby. It's a big yard, so we will need to be careful that we will be t taking a diverging track. So we do need to slow down, but fortunately, you can tell quite far off when you're approaching Shelby Yard, and I'll tell you why. If we go to the map, I didn't mean to do, ooh, it's over there now, it was to our right earlier. That's probably because I curve it around. But this is how you can tell you're approaching Shelby. So if I go to task, this is where we're going. Uh, I'm not sure if that is a siding actually. I shall have a look now. Yeah, no, yeah, yes it is. But at Shelby, it's four track. It's a few go in but there, so it's three track. And then the third track cuts out. So when this track comes in from your left, and I don't know about this game, but in trains for Thousand States, you could see it from quite far out right? because there was, wasn't many trees. When you start seeing that track, you're coming into the yard, and then there's a curve, and then you're in the yard. Oh, speeding. Quite badly, actually. So we need to brake. We should be passing... I can't remember what it is. I think it's a grain... I want to say it's a grain plant or something like that on the right soon. Is that it? No, I think that's just a siding. Not sure. As I said, everything's modelled differently in Train 2006 and that's mainly what I'm using for my knowledge of this route. Is that it? Yeah, I think that's it. In Train 2006 there was an actual silo system there, but evidently not here. Yeah, it was a level crossing, then a siding. But I knew that was there, but it's just modelled so differently in Trains 2006. But that's what I was looking out for. It is cool when you play the same route on two different games just to see the little differences. Like in Trains 2006, for example, you couldn't do this. You couldn't drive on the left track we'd have to go on the right hand side track or there'd be no signals, no speed limits or anything you just slam directly into another train whereas on this one it appears that you can drive on either track they probably do stick to one side in real life just so pa trains can pass each other but I'm guessing there's no you have to travel on this route system but in Trains 2006 there were you couldn't go the wrong way up the track or you'd just crash, you'd derail get more anti-aliasing on the fence for there. I know, I'm pretty sure my graphics card should be dealing with that better. <coughs> Unless it's something to do with a game or something. But I'm pretty sure Nvidia cards, especially good ones, have anti-aliasing built in, but perhaps it only works if the game has it as well. Could be. Possibly. But yeah, I didn't think it was meant to happen, aliasing. Oh well, it doesn't really matter. Whistle. Not too far away from my destination now. We've about four fifths of the way through. It'd be nice to see some cars on the road. Ooh. Let's have a look around the cabin, see if we can do anything. Can we open the window? Not that one. No, that one. No. I'm not sure how to move the camera. Oh, no. Uh, yep, yeah, that's the camera we just in. Let's not use the keyboard to try and move the camera. Sun visor, you can play with that. That's pretty cool. What's that? No. Uh, nothing over there. There is one locomotive, can't remember which one it is, that has a fan in the cockpit. That would be quite cool. I assume it is called a cockpit cabin, something like that. Oh, missed that level crossing. Looking around the cab, too busy. One of these things. No, no. Ooh. Ah, that's cool. That is very cool. It's a shame it's not raining. Oh, what's that? Nothing. I do like having a look round and exploring. What are these down here? 
thought that was a speed change first then, but evidently not. Yeah, evidently it is, it's just not marked on the freaking map. I'm pretty sure this has sent us onto the wrong track. Because there was a speedboard on the other side, just not this side. Pretty sure the game was meant to put us on the other track. That sucks. It'd be nice to see the speed limit setup come in. So good job I'm not in career mode, eh? Come on, speed. Lead off. We are getting close now. Eight miles. 58, 57. I'm going to release the brakes at... Uh, we're going downhill, so I'll do it at 54, 53, something like that. There. Right, back to the switches. What's that do? Oh, they're actually labelled. Train line fuel pump. Gen field. Control. Dynamic brake. Does that work? No. Cab light. Oh, I gotta check that out. Uh, oh, that's cool. It's nice when they model little features like that. Like, it serves no purpose, really. Well, I suppose at night they would, but it doesn't serve much purpose. They model it anyway. I think that's pretty cool. Attention to detail. Step light. I know what that is. I've seen this before. Yeah, and now there's a little light by the steps. See it? It's hard to show you properly, but this, you should be able to see a little like light underneath the steps. Like it illuminates the ground a bit more. That's what that is. Oop, need to go to step one. We're speeding. Break 10%. Ditch lights. They don't work. Uh, yeah, let's not press that one. The emergency brake. That would be bad. Right, where are we? I do actually need to keep my eyes on the track now. I'm going to leave the brake in at 10% for a while. In fact, how far out are we? Right, when we get through the next set of curves, I'm going to start braking more heavily. Because that's when we need to pay attention. The yard literally right there. And bear in mind, it's not 6.8 miles to the yard. That's 6 point, well, 7 now miles till we stop. That's where the cap needs to stop. Or the middle of the track needs to be on, something like that. But either way, the, the actual front of the yard is probably 5 miles away, if not less. So that is something I do need to pay attention to. I saw that level crossing from quite far away, actually. I'm pretty proud of that. Two and little two. Where does that road go? I have no idea. And speeding. Because why not? My throat's quite sore today. I always got something wrong with my throat. That's annoying. I am asthmatic, by the way, so. You know. I haven't got an inhaler as well, that's pretty bad. It ran out and I haven't got time to go to the doctors. <laughs> I work nights, so it's excusable. I am loving my job, by the way. It's weird, I've gone nearly a whole video without mentioning it. But yeah, for those who didn't watch my last video, I, well, my last couple of videos, I do have a new job. I'm working nights for Amazon. Well, through agency for Amazon in a warehouse. I made that to be a bit more glamorous than it is, but it's still a cool job. It pays well. So, yeah, I'm enjoying it. The only problem with working nights, if anyone out there has never done nights before and they're thinking about it, one thing you need to know is when you finish nights, especially if you're on a 10-hour shift like me, you will be worn out. So, you go straight home, and even though you have stuff you need to do while it's still daylight, still morning, you're just it's so tired. Like honestly, the best thing you can do, I'd say, is go to sleep. Unless it's really important, just go to sleep. Wait, leave it until the day off. Like honestly, it is really tiring doing nights. And another thing is, I pretty much lost contact with two of my best friends. I saw one of them yesterday because I had a day off. And I got a day off as well. But I can't see my other friend today because he's in work and he works days. So you do kind of find yourself 
not having much of a social life. Like I used to go out most days to see my friends and go to the pub or whatever. But now I just can't because the only time I'm free on my days off, the only time I'm really awake anymore is at night. Like, it's weird how it screws with your body clock. Like, it'd be like, I'm saying like a lot in this sentence, <laughs> but it'd be like, it'd feel like it was five o'clock in the afternoon, but you'd look at your watch or your clock or whatever, and it's like, oh, it's like 20 past three in the morning. And you see the sun come up early morning, like five, six o'clock, and it's like, oh, it's a lovely afternoon. Oh, wait, it's not afternoon anymore. It's, it's weird how it screws with your body clock. And now I am getting close, so I need to start breaking 10%. But yeah, it, it definitely screws with your body clock a bit. So my advice is, if you don't have many friends, why not do nights? <laughs> if you don't have much of a social life, nothing wrong with that then why not do nights? Better pay and just why not? You'll get used to the nights eventually. If you're a night owl, again, why not work nights? But if you value your time with friends, if you see a family a lot, or if there's a lot of stuff you have to do in daytime, I wouldn't advise nights. That's just how I, that's my opinion, that's how I view it. It's up to you, obviously it's your choice, but just I would view it. I took the brakes off and thinking way below the speed limit but we need to slow down a lot. Let me guess. Right, that's important, we need to pay attention to that. No we don't, that's for the tracks on the right. I don't get why I press on this track, that was a bit stupid of it. Have one last little tracking shot as the train goes past. It's weird, it's the, every time the dolly, which is the wheels, go past the controller, like past the le next to me by there, the controller shakes as if, and it actually feels like the train's going past you. That's actually a really cool detail. Like, I've never even noticed that before. It's like when a train goes past you and the ground shakes under your feet, it's like that kind of sensation. That's really cool. And we have a yellow light we have to be careful of. I think yellow on top, red on the bottom means the next signal's red. I think. I'm not sure. I know, I'll keep an eye out for it. I think 40 is a sufficient speed. Like, worst comes to worst, we d won't derail if we change track all of a sudden. But now, yeah, we're coming to the end of our journey. So, I think it's been quite fun. It's not been as good a scenery as it could have been, but better than Cajon Pass, I can tell you that much. But. I certainly hope you like this video guys, the Marais Pass is quite special, a lot of people love it and I can see why it is a good route. So make sure you let me know if you would like to see the passenger service on this route, I don't know where it would be, probably whitefish over the mountains, I know if you have an idea let me know if you'd like to see it go from a certain place to a different place, by all means let me know and I'll see what I can put together. But just give me a thumbs up and I'll let me know that you want to see that video. And now we basically just got to slow right down for this 15 limit. In fact, no, we need to slow down even further because the next light might be red. I didn't think about that. Can I see the next light? That looks like a red light to me over there, but I'm not sure what track it's on. And there's one next to it which is green and red, so... I'm not sure which one's ours. I could go outside camera and or free camera and go have a look, but I think it's more realistic to do it like this because obviously a real train driver can't just go, oh, I can't see what that is in the distance, and then just run at the speed of sound, turn into the flash and go see what it is, then go back to the cab. Because obviously that would defy the laws of physics, right? Uh, I didn't mean to do that, I meant to zoom in. I think that means we can go red with red flashing and I'm going to press tab just in case. Yeah, it's not saying it's a red light so I'm going to go through it. Slow. I love that, the speed limit goes from 65 to 15. <laughs> Let's give it a bit of throttle so we don't go too slowly. Crossing over into the yard now. It'd be nice if we wasn't on this track 
like the, the one next to the main line. It'd be nice if we went a bit further out onto like the outside track or something. That'd be pretty cool. But you know, not much I can do about it now. I'm just glad we haven't derailed and crashed, so my footage is lost. <laughs> do you know what I've just noticed? Step lights are still on. <laughs> Forgot to turn them off. Don't need them. I might do another route in this train at night, just so I can show you that and the inside cab light and everything. Oh, speeding. That's all right though. Very slowly into the yard because there's lots of people around, obviously. But welcome to Shelby. I'll tell you what, while we're waiting for the train to go off into the distance, I'll show you. Oh, pardon me. <laughs> a bit. That's that Fanta. Show you a unique feature of Shelby. If we go down to the end, hopefully we can go down to the end. So this is where the yard finishes here. That's Shelby over there, obviously. And by there as well, I'm assuming. So the yard ends here. But one track here actually curves off and it goes behind the station. So no matter what, you have to cross, cross over a track to get to the train station. Like it goes behind, goes over this level crossing, which is actually four level crossings in a row, because, you know, that's how you do it. And then it rejoins there. It's just a bypass, a little bypass for locomotives and things. But here's a cool feature. And then we've got a little turnaround loop over there, or at least I think we have. Not sure. And... It'll take us forever to get down to have a look because the camera's trapped. We've hit the edge of the boundary. Yeah, that is a cool little feature. That's cool as well, the four level crossings in a row. I don't get why they couldn't just have one big one, but you know. Nice little bridge here. I bet a lot of train spotters have stood right here. So many train spotters would have stood right here and here just to take photos of the very special Empire Express. Let's go back to our train anyway. <laughs> just over there doing nothing, making sure we can't see our own train, why not? Right, where's the back? I think as soon as the back crosses over these points, uh, actually no, these points here, I think that's when we should stop. Another little bridge over the yard. Just got to be careful the front end doesn't go through the points or anything. Should we just go down to the end of the side and how far are we? Hmm. Let's accelerate a little bit. Didn't mean to close the hood. That's one annoying thing. 15 limit. That's so slow. Right, come on, tick tock. I've only got five years left to live, come on. I haven't got five years left to live, <laughs> just, just to clarify that. Come on, train. Why are you slowing down so... Oh, we're actually going uphill a little bit. As soon as it hits 15, give it 12% throttle. Go back up to 15.5, back down. And let's just keep repeating that until we come to a stop. Yeah, we're pretty close to the end now. I suppose I could let it coast this last little bit. In fact, I'm going to give it a little bit of break. 5% seems fine. But yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I, I actually enjoyed making it a fair bit, i got to be fair. I was a bit meh on making it at first. Why are we not stopping? That's better. I think we might actually overrun this point a little bit. Excellent driving. But yeah guys, thanks for watching, make sure you come back for the next episode, and if you like this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up to let me know, and also if you'd like to see the next video, if you have any route suggestions or trains you'd like to see, let me know, I'll see if I can get them, and as always, thanks for watching, peace out guys.